Join the conversation with the Morning Majlis, Pulse 95. Looking at the headlines in CNN or on CNN, and it is impeach is mentioned twice. Mm. I can see from the front page there's four, t- five times impeachment has been mentioned. It starts off with the second Trump impeachment and followed by impeached again. Mm. These are the 10 House Rep- Republicans who voted to impeach Trump. Why these Republicans voted for impeachment? All about impeachment. Biden calls on Senate to pursue impeachment. They're having a a, a cracking time uh, digging in and uh, finding out what's going on. Well, what does it really mean to impeach a president? Just to make it clear, in the United States, impeachment is the equivalent of an indictment in, in cr- cr- criminal law. It's essentially a statement of charges against an official who remains in office during the trial. Now, as for who has the power to, impre- to impeach the president, the United States Constitution provides that the House of Representatives shall have the sole power of impeachment, uh, according to Article 1, Section 2, and that the Senate shall have the sole power to try all impeachments, but no person shall be convicted without the uh, concurrence of two-thirds of the members present. So um, while the House has um, several uh, powers assigned exclusively to it, including the power to initiate revenue bills, impeach federal uh, officials, and elect the president in the case of an electoral college tie, the Senate has the sole power to confirm those of the president's appointments that require consent and to ratify treaties as well. Going back to President uh, Donald Trump being the first president to be impeached twice. This is the first time in American history this happened. But impeachment has happened before. Um, Andrew Johnson, the 17th U.S. president, was impeached by the House uh, in 1868 for high crimes and misdemeanors after he was accused of violating the Tenure of Office Act. Bill Clinton again as well. Um, the 42nd president was impeached by the House on um, October in October 1998 for high crimes and misdemeanors on accusations of lying under oath and obstruction of justice. The latest being Donald Trump, the 45th U.S. president. He was impeached by the House actually the first time in December 2019 after two articles were adopted accusing him of abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. So the impeachment stemmed from accusations that Trump pressured Ukrainian officials into investigating his soon-to-be election opponent president-elect at the time, Joe Biden. Less than a year later, here we are. Trump is the first U.S. president in history to be impeached twice after the House voted on allegations including inciting violence against the government. And um, Trump, again, impeachment happened Wednesday, yesterday, the 12th of January as, or, yeah, the 12th of January. The 13th of January, as the Democrats have a majority in the House. Now, 10 Republicans voted in favor of the president's impeachment. Trump, who leaves office on the 20th of January, is unlikely to have his Senate trial under uh, until uh, after he has departed from the White House at the end of his first and only term. Yeah, so uh, more specifically, he's being impeached for high crimes and misdemeanors, uh, specifically an incitement of an insurrection against the federal government at the U.S. Capitol. Essentially, this is the incident in which Trump supporters stormed the Capitol last week in a chaotic scene that left five people dead. What's notable about this is the last impeachment. No Republicans broke rank. Everybody voted against. This time around, as Rania, you rightly mentioned, 10 of them did so. Notably, Representative Liz Cheney of Wyoming as well, who chairs the House Republican Conference. So the question is what now? If Trump is convicted by the Senate, lawmakers could hold another vote to block him from running for office ever again. He indicated he plans to run on 2024. So if he is convicted of this, he's not going to be able to do that anymore. The trial is not going to happen immediately. The Senate may not reconvene until the 19th of January, according to spokesperson for Republican Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. McConnell also said he has not made a final decision on how he will vote. He said, I intend to listen to the legal arguments when they are presented to the Senate. Now, here's the deal. When this goes to the Senate, there will be a trial to determine whether or not President Trump is guilty. In order to convict Trump, you need a two-thirds majority, meaning at least 17 Republicans would have to vote with Democrats in the evenly split 100-seat chamber. Now, what? how possible is this? 
New York Times reported that as many as 20 Senate Republicans are open to convicting the president. So if 17 of those vote convict, then Trump will essentially be convicted and uh, could possibly not ever be able to run for office again. It's very interesting to see what's going on because uh, a reaction from uh, um, uh, the, the streets is going to be heightened. Uh, new intelligence has been emerging about a, a potential capital attack likely to motivate domestic extremists. Trump has also asked uh, people to stop paying Rudy Giuliani's legal fees. Oh. Yes, he's been blaming his longtime attorney and many others for the predicament he now finds himself in. Now he turned against him. Yeah, <laughs> Gi- Giuliani is still expected to play a role this in a, Trump's impeachment this comes defense. Comes to no surprise. But he's been left out of most of the conversations so far. Um, details about Giuliani's legal fees were first reported by uh, the broadsheet in the United States, uh, the Washington Post. Uh, but uh, we're still awaiting details in terms of what's going on. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah. it's going to be very interesting. It, it is going to be interesting. And uh, look, Trump is very isolated. I mean, it isn't just Rudy Giuliani. When this whole impeachment thing, the insurrection thing happened and... It started gaining steam, the prospect of Trump being impeached. Trump was reportedly upset that virtually no one's publicly defended him. This includes Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany, Senior Advisor and Son-in-Law Jared Kushner, Economic Advisor Larry Kudlow, National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien, Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, and even the Vice President Mike Pence. Uh, They... Reportedly, President Trump is uh, wound up. The, his inner circle has shrunk quite significantly. No one's come out to defend him, and he feels quite isolated. That's what the reports are saying. And when you look at his team and his administration, there's been some radio silence as well. This is a movie. This is the ho- Hollywood. Look at this. This is this is a story. You know, people d- don't make the dear Untergang, and you know they've made a lot of big movies about other. Uh, big uh, um, uh, personalities, uh, but Netflix here, will adopt this. Don't worry. Yeah, it will Amazon happen. Movie. It will happen. A- Amazon will Prime. Happen. I feel like real life is more interesting than the movie. Like you <laughs> yeah. can't ever, you can't get something this strange, sudden, shocking, Very surprising strange. in in a movie. It's just a, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we're asking you this question: Who was the uh, president who was impeached before Donald Trump? If you know the answer, text us and maybe I mentioned it. Maybe you have. And mm. uh, text us in 4215 if you know the answer. Uh, who was the previous US president to be impeached? Three of them have, but none of them have been convicted yet. Looking at the situation and the scenario, Trump is probably on, on track to be the first uh, to be convicted. Before we get convicted for delaying our business news headlines, we'll quickly, swiftly move on to it as well. And we'll be right back after the world of business news. This is the Morning Majlis on Pulse 95. Join the conversation with the Morning Majlis, Pulse 95. Welcome back to the Morning Majlis. Let's talk about Lebanon. The World Bank has approved a $246 million loan to the country to provide emergency cash assistance to nearly 800,000 Lebanese people who've been reeling under Lebanon's compound economic and health crises. And the World Bank said in a statement that the loan would support the development of a national safety net in the country, which was struggling with a financial strike long or excuse me, a financial crisis long before the pandemic had struck which drove nearly half of the population in this small country of 6 million people into poverty. Over 1 million refugees from Syria live in Lebanon as well under horrifying conditions in camps as well. So uh, the economic crisis has led to a projected 19.2% decline in the GDP, triple-digit inflation, and is pushing 1.7 million people before below the poverty line. Some 22% of the population is expected to fall into extreme poverty. And now Lebanon has been relying on international donors for humanitarian assistance. Yeah, to be more specific, approximately 1.7 million people are estimated to fall under the poverty line for which 841,000 people will be under the poverty or food poverty line. So the situation has been further compounded, obviously, by the COVID-19 situation uh, with the recent alarming surge in the number of infected cases, which is a severely strained 
uh, also at, يعني adding to a severely strained uh, health and medical system and also the devastating economic impact of lockdowns on jobs and livelihoods as well. And, and then we got the, the, the port of, of Beirut explosion that happened um, on August 4th, which resulted in the loss of precious lives and livelihoods left ravaging damages estimated in the range of 3.8 to about 4.6 billion dollars US dollars and uh, led to further migration and brain drain basically and uh, Lebanon has also been facing the repercussions of a 10 year long Syria crisis causing a severe drain on public service delivery and resources as well and just like uh, Ahmed said Lebanon hosts the largest per capita share of displaced Syrians accounting to a quarter of its population so definitely the consequences of these repeated shocks on the economic well-being um, of of, how, of households basically uh, potentially disastrous mm. so this is much needed yeah the cash assistance for a year to 147,000 extremely poor Lebanese households um, we're also seeing the school fees yeah. uh, will be paid for Uh, which is uh, really um, a very, very important gesture. Now, looking at Lebanon as, as a whole, this, this news announcement comes two de- well, a day after the Interpol had issued red notices to the ship's owner and uh, the captain, uh, which had uh, led to the port explosion. Um, Lebanon is also beginning its 11 days of 24-hour long curfews to stem the COVID-19. So economically, it is going to face a bit of a, a, a burden and uh, the coronavirus situation had also been worsened because of that explosion uh, 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 at the port in, in Lebanon. So uh, well, the 11-day lockdown, in fact, starts today. Yeah, indeed. And uh, it's going to go on uh, until the 25th. Of course, it's subject to extensions. And this is the first time the Lebanese armed forces, along with the state security apparatus, will be deployed to ensure the implementation of this curfew. They haven't been asked before to take part in the measures to limit the spread of the coronavirus. We'll be right back. This is the Morning Majlis on Pulse 95. Join the conversation with the Morning Majlis. Pulse 95. Bit of an aviation talk. We just had the aviation talk off air, just talking about if IATA is going to pass a law that says you need to be vaccinated uh, to travel. Nothing of that sort has been announced or even whispered yet, but it is just a thought at the back of our minds because the world of aviation is certainly somewhere uh, something that has been affected the most. Emirates recently, Sir Tim Clark, said that all of the, the wide-bodied aircrafts will be flying up in the air by the end of this year they'll be back to normal operations very uh, optimistic outlook but looking at um, plane makers specifically one airline or one plane manufacturer has had a horrible time and it is the world of boeing Oh uh, yeah, it is definitely. Boeing handed over 59% fewer jets to its customers in the year of 2020, lagging behind rival Airbus after a 20-month ban on its best-selling 737 Max and manufacturing defects uh, with its 787 Dreamliner. So the uh, the plane maker delivered a total of 157 planes in t- 2020. That's down from. 380 planes in the previous year and from a record 806 jets in 2018 that is according to Boeing's orders and deliveries data that was actually released uh, yesterday so um, according to Boeing's executive vice president of enterprise operations and chief financial officer Greg Smith he said through the global pandemic We took meaningful steps to adapt to our new market, transform our business, and also deliver for our commercial defense space and services customers in the year of 2020. Yeah, indeed, uh, quite the bruising year for Boeing, uh, especially amid the crashes of the 737 MAX and, of course, the global pandemic. And all of those uh, circumstances left Bo- uh, Boeing in survival mode. And uh, they had to do a number of things as well. Uh, so this hit to airline travel and questions over the long-term survival prompted Boeing to mount a campaign in Washington for a federal bailout, ultimately succeeding in getting $17 billion dollars in relief under the CARES package back in March. But in the end, Boeing opted not to tap into those funds after emergency steps initiated by the Federal Reserve opened up the debt market. And using this, Boeing 
was able to raise $25 billion in publicly traded bonds in April. Everyone is eyeing the return of the MAX now. That's where Boeing's fortunes are depending on at the moment. They had begun a fall in the fall, or they had begun to turn uh, in a good direction in the fall of last year when the Federal Aviation Administration cleared the MAX to return to service following an extensive review. On December 3rd, Boeing announced its first major order for new MAX planes following the 20-month grounding from Ireland's Ryanair. Progress on coronavirus vaccines also boosted prospects that the airline industry would recover. Analysts say it's going to take some time now before things go back to pre-pandemic levels or even in a positive direction for Boeing. Um, they say it's going to be around three years for the airline industry to return to that level of activity and about five years to return to growth. But in early December, uh, Boeing chief said the vaccine, quote, came along a, lo came along a little faster than I think. And that means our timeline is a little more aggressive today. So the country, the company has adjusted its projections res respectively, according to those uh, figures. Yep. And uh, we're looking at uh, w w what's going on at the moment uh, with uh, Emirates as well, because Emirates has ordered uh, Boeing 777X. Now, this is a wide bodied aircraft that can uh, accommodate about 406 people following Boeing's a little bit of a drama. It's not even a little bit of a drama. It's a massive drama. Uh, the Bo Emirates Tim President Tim Clark said the entry of Boeing 777X to their service may even go past 2023 or even longer. So looking at the bigger picture here, it is in a bit of a, a hot water situation. Uh, Boeing also got into some awful news after finally getting some form of an approval last month. Air Canada is a 7378 MAX en route from Arizona and Montreal with through three crew members on board suffered an engine issue that forced the crew to divert the aircraft to Arizona uh, way back in well, a couple of weeks ago in fact and uh, that is just just goes to show how much of a crazy situation how much of a whirlwind of a situation it is has been for 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 boeing at the time and at, at the moment so we'll keep a close eye on what's going on um their net orders for all models last year shrank by 1026 planes after adjustments for cancellations and customers converting to other models We'll have to see what's going on. And uh, Boeing is expected to report its 2020 financial results on the 27th of January. It will certainly garner s too much of an attention of other companies. We'll keep you posted about what's going on. Stay with us here on the Morning Majlis. Up next, we will be talking about from aviation to infinity and beyond. The observatory here uh, in the Emirate of Sharjah has been getting new global achievements. What's going on? All of this will be discussed right here on the Morning Majlis. Off 95. The Morning Majlis. Talking the stories that are shaping headlines. This is, this is Pulse 95. This is Pulse 95. Let us know on the text lines 4215 what you are watching at the moment. I got uh, the uh, the fever of, let's say, pulse fever of uh, Rania and uh, our colleague on the show uh, or on the station, Nadula. I started watching Crown again. Yes. I was on season four. <laughs> I am on season four at the moment. and uh, You are? Yeah. I, I, I used to You're watch... You're way past ahead of me. <laughs> Look, thing is, I started watching Crown when it first came out. I was a big, fan, I've always been a big fan of Claire Foy. I've been, yeah. I'm a big fan of uh, um, uh, Olivia Coleman as well. She, I think she's done a fantastic job playing uh, the senior, the older, the older version, version of version Queen of Elizabeth. Queen. Yeah. And uh, Olivia Coleman is is a very, very, very well respected actress mm -hmm. over in the United Kingdom. So, so she's she's good. And um, uh, the Gillian also playing um, Margaret Thatcher fantastic performance right now Netflix is the talk of the town everyone gets now it's become a mainstream subscription everyone started off by buying getting that free subscription and then got roped in and then that's it you know they're that's all gone true. they left the card details they forgot to change it they forgot to, uh, to delete it same with Apple Pay same with Spotify same with everything you forget to remove your details mm. 
Right. So now what happens is you want to spend your time watching it. You want to maximize it. The only time I've maximized and uh, uh, used uh, Netflix so much was when I was an asymptomatic COVID-19 patient. <laughs> and I spent 14 days doing nothing but just watching different movies and I used to do it like, I used to say okay Tuesday Emirati movie night Wednesday, <laughs> when, Wednesday evening I'll watch this this day I'll watch this and I, I, I really wanted to focus on the movies because with the series you get so hooked onto it and then they end and you're like I've got nothing to watch now yeah yeah, yeah. so luckily to help us rescue us Netflix has come out with their 21 day policy well, actually, now they're promising uh, a new movie every single week. They announced this actually uh, a couple of days ago. So they'll be prepared. This was this will happen in 2021. Um, they shared this news on their official uh, Twitter page in a video featuring some of the stars attached to those projects. So. 2021, a new movie every week on Netflix. So a sneak peek at 27 of the biggest, brightest, fastest, funniest, feel good, feel everything films and stars coming to Netflix this year. This is it. The titles include action movie Red Notice starring Gal Gadot, um, Ryan Reynolds and also Dwayne Johnson. Zack Snyder's uh, zombie film Army of the Dead political satire Don't Look Up featuring Jennifer Lawrence and Leonardo DiCaprio and also musical Tick Tick Boom which is Lynn manuel Miranda's directorial debut among many others and the list goes on it includes uh, acquisitions like Halle Berry's directorial debut Bruised and and also Malcolm and Mary starring Zendaya and John David Washington it just goes on and on yeah, a lot of big names. So much planned this year. For sure. Uh, yeah. They also have The Harder They Fall with Regina King, Idris Alba, and uh, Lovecraft County Breakout, Jonathan Majors. There's another movie called Don't Look Up. It's going to star Jennifer Lawrence, Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio, Ariana Grande, Kid Cudi, and Meryl Streep. Uh, so, you know, a lot of homegrown top-rated franchises uh, on Netflix that will be airing as well. And Netflix has certainly made good on its high-profile promise to deliver new movies during the pandemic uh, as well, uh, it's pretty much primed in a great position, especially compared to other platforms and other movie streaming outlets. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> there's going to be a lot of movies. That's mm -hmm. all I'm going to say. Uh, very In action, horror, thrillers, sci-fi, romance. What are you guys looking forward to? I'm really looking forward to this. This is a new name. This is a familiar name. Uh, Aral Stein, his adaption or adaptation of Fear Street. That's amazing. Goosebumps was one of the things of back in the days oh, yeah. of Mr. Aral Stein, and now he's coming out with the uh, uh, with Fear Street is now going to be adapted into a film. Or oh, that is something that I'm definitely looking forward to. Uh, back in the days when Goosebumps used to make the movies uh, or their series, it was uh, crazy. It was really intense. Uh, you'd be scared, but then you look back and think, what? Well, mm. Why was I scared about that? Um, but yeah, it's so uh, so much to look forward to, really. Um, um, I'd say I'm looking yeah. for Don't Look Up. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it has a good, really uh, unique concept to it. It's like a satire, disaster, comedy. I love that kind of uh, style of a film. So it's pretty cool. Plus the stars that are in it: yeah. Jennifer Lawrence, uh, DiCaprio. I just, it's amazing. He's been Can't off. For he's been away from the limelight. He for has a while. been. He has been. He's been MIA. He's been doing a lot of documentary style stuff, but uh, uh, him and another uh, prominent figure who used to be quite dominant on the movie scene, uh, Zach Afron, he's also mm -hmm. been away. Zach Afron has mm -hmm. been doing the documentaries on Netflix at the moment about uh, different destinations. And uh, But yeah, it'll be very interesting to see all these uh, big names. Uh, what was your favorite film if you had to choose one in 2020 on Netflix? Ooh, that's, that's a, a good question. That's a tough one, right? Were there any movies in 2020? Yeah. There were? There were. There <laughs> yeah, were plenty. Not, no. There were a lot. Queen's Gambit, have you seen it? No. Uh, it's on Netflix. Yeah. I, I know it's there. Yeah. Uh, the Call, uh, The yeah. Old Guard, A Simple Favor. That was really fun. I've, I've seen that. It's a really funny one. Um, I really cannot remember, to be honest. The Irishman. I yeah, that was pretty yeah, good. That was good. I loved it. That, that was 2020? Was it 2019? 2020. Imagine that, that. That. It's interesting. Wow. It, a lot of things feel like forever yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. So true. Uh, but yeah, there are a lot of good titles on Netflix this year for sure. Let us know. Text us at 4215. What was your or favorite? Or most watched in 2020. Yeah. You let it, let, uh, tell us what you're looking forward to uh, for the year 2021 as far as Netflix releases are concerned. You could also tell us what you've been watching. 4215.
4215 indeed. My mind is a bit blank at the moment. Mine morning. too. Yeah, I have no <laughs> idea what I watched. Uh, stay with us on the Morning Minds list. Text us on 4215. If you liked this episode of The Morning Majlis, drop a like and subscribe. 95. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories. Bubbles.